right, here's what I want to do. I'm ready to preach if y'all are ready to listen. I got a word I really believe that's brewing in my spirit. I want to preach on the subject today, why did God choose Mary? Why did God choose Mary? And so this is a, a really a challenging message because uh, she was a teenager. She was a teenager. So why did God choose Mary? And so I'm sure all of us have a, a, an answer in your mind that you're sitting there thinking about why God chose Mary. But uh, I want to give you straight out of the Word of God, Luke chapter 1. I'm excited. Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 26 through 38. It's a little reading, but you know what? I'm not going to apologize for reading the Word of God at church. I'm not going to apologize for reading the, That's a line of Scripture there, preacher. I can tell right there you're not reading the Bible. So Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. I'm reading now the ESV today. Uh, how, how many of y'all glad to come to church today? Anybody glad that you're here today, man? I'm so thankful y'all are here. I really am. I'm so thankful. Church is essential. It's essential. Barna Research said this morning in, in the news, I'm a big news guy, and uh, they said these words, mental health is proven to be a fact by those who are attending church in this season that their mental health capacity is better. Imagine that. Imagine that. Lowe's is essential. Kroger's is essential. McDonald's is essential. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Church is essential. Come on, y'all. Where y'all been? Vacation's essential. Tennessee's essential. <laughs> let's preach. Y'all ready to preach. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38. Y'all know I love you. It's true. But anyway. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent, watch this, was, this angel was sent by God, from God. Every angel has an assignment. Angels are real. They're probably here right now. Now, I don't see them. Well, I do one, Dana. Whoa! Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, that's a good... I don't care if y'all like her or not, she's my wife. I watch it. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed with a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Listen to this. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. I don't know if he sounded like that, but I just, I just like that. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern... What sort of greeting this might be? I can just see Mary now is like, uh, is this a greeting? Why are you here? What's going on? What's, I mean, what's up? And the angel said to her, angels can talk. It's what the Bible says. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor. Hallelujah. You have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name. I love this name. It's above all other names. The name of Jesus Christ. Isn't that good? Call him, call him Jesus. Hallelujah. He will be great. And he will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. I love this. And of his kingdom, his kingdom, there will be no end. How you know heaven's not going to end? Right there. There'll be no end, I love this, to the kingdom of heaven. We get Jesus, we get each other, we get our loved ones, we get our moms and our dads forever and ever and ever and ever. It has no end. I love that. It has no end. And I love this. It says these words, and Mary said to the angel, how will this be? Since I'm a virgin, I've never even been with a man before. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit. Mm, mm, mm. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be called holy. See, that's what sets him aside. We're born into sin. He was born as a Savior. He's born holy. We're born a mess. This is why I love this. It will overshadow him, therefore it's called holy, the son of God. And behold, watch this, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, watch out women, in her old age, 
has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her to was called barren. Verse 37, one of my life verses, for nothing will be impossible with God. For nothing, did y'all hear me? Nothing will be impossible with God. Brian, I can't, nothing will be impossible with God. Whatever you're going through, nothing will be impossible with God. With God, all things are? Y'all believe that? Let's go, because this is, this is a challenging chapter. He takes a teenager, gets pregnant by the Holy Ghost. We're going to talk about that, but for nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, behold, listen, there's a key. I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So why did God choose Mary? Why did God choose a little teenage girl to birth Jesus Christ into this world? What made Mary, this is the way I got to study the Bible. What made Mary stand out above and beyond all the other teenagers? Teenagers, I'm talking to y'all today. Adults, I'm talking to you today. So listen, why did God choose Mary? This is what I believe after studying the Bible. <laughs> this is what I believe. Number one, I love this. Are y'all ready? Because, man, listen, I'm excited to preach this word. I get taught up studying and preaching the Word of God. So I hope I can deliver it the way God downloaded it in my spirit. Number one, why did God choose Mary? I personally believe Mary was a carrier of the Word. Now listen to me. Mary was a carrier of the Word. I seen a picture the other day, and uh, I want to show it to you. And I thought this picture that I'm getting ready to show to you hit the nail on the head. Aaron, go ahead and put that picture up there. What if we begin to treat our Bibles the way we treat our cell phones? What if we carried it with us everywhere? Oh, I'm preaching good. What if we turned back to go to get it if we forgot it? Oh, it's, it's good up in here today. What if we checked it for messages throughout the day? <laughs> Y'all, it's okay. Y'all keep looking like it. It's all right. What if we used it in case of an emergency? <laughs> what if we spend an hour or more using it each day? Some of you are a carrier of your cell phones mm, more than you are a carrier of the Word of God. I'm preaching so good. I know you, listen, some of you may call me old school, and that's okay. I'm, I'm 49, I'll, I'll accept that. You may call me old Pentecostal, old Southern Baptist, old Independent Baptist, call me whatever you want to. But that picture right there speaks truth and volumes, and I want that picture to get deep down in our spirits this morning. What are you known to carry? What are you known? Come on, somebody. What are you known to carry? When someone looks at you, are you known to be a carrier of bitterness? Huh. Is somebody afraid to run into you in aisle 13 at, at the Walmart? What are you known? Are you a carrier of discord? Are you a negative carrier? You say, Brian, my God, how far are you going to go? What are you carrying? You hang around somebody five minutes, you'll know what they're carrying. You ask somebody how they're doing, you'll know very quickly what they're really truly thinking in their mind. Hallelujah. What are you known, what are you known to carry? Are you a carrier of anger? Or listen, are you a walking? Hallelujah. Are you a carrier? Of, are you a walking, talking <laughs> Are you a living Bible that displays love, grace, mercy, kindness, goodness, gentleness? What are you carrying this morning? If somebody looks at your life, are you going to be like Mary and say, man, I know what she's carrying. She's a carrier of the word. I know you may not feel good this morning. Watch this. What does God say about you? What is God saying over Elko? What is God saying over your marriage? Listen, I know you can go to a psychiatrist. I'm a counselor, 
But watch this. A true counselor will always point you back to the Word of God. They'll always point you back to the Word of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. What are you known to carry? I love this. Willie, I thought about this a lot, man. And I love what I'm getting ready to share with y'all. Wherever Mary went, God went. Wherever God went, Mary went. <laughs> you couldn't get one, watch this, without the other. Watch this. It was a package deal in Kentucky. It was a package deal. You seen Mary, you seen Jesus. You seen Jesus, you seen Mary. When people look at your life, not only what are you known to carry, what do they see on you? What do they see on you? I can hear some of y'all saying, well, Brian, Brother Brian, now Mary was pregnant. She had to carry Jesus because Jesus was in her. Well, I'm going to tell you. I guess we're all pregnant then. Well, there went the science class. <laughs> there went it on. I guess we're all pregnant then. Y'all help me this morning. Because I am a carrier of the word of Jesus Christ. He lives in me. Come on, somebody. He, he lives in us. Where I go, he goes. Where he goes, I go. Why, you can't get him without getting me. Y'all understand what I'm preaching this morning? Turn to your neighbor and say, even though you're pregnant, you look good today. Now, all the men are all bald head right now. I am a carrier. Listen, y'all can thank your boy, whatever y'all think of me. Watch this. I don't care. I've got the Holy Spirit. God is for me. Jesus is with me. But the Holy Ghost is in me. Y'all understand what I'm preaching this morning? He lives in me. I am a carrier of the word of Jesus Christ. That's so powerful. That is so powerful. You say, Brian, I don't believe it. Well, you ain't pregnant. Oh, this is so good. God just spoke this to me. I love when God speaks. Do you ever have to question if somebody's pregnant? Well, not <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> yo, yo, you better back up. You better back up. <laughs> I told y'all. <laughs> yeah, listen, I have fun at church. Y'all just sit there like, suck a little lemon if you want to. I, listen, you better have fun. Jesus is not born. He made you. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all are sitting there looking like, I don't believe this is church. Watch, I'm telling you. I'm just telling y'all. I don't have to ever ask. If I see a wo woman and her belly sticking out past her toes. I don't have to ask that. I don't sit there and say, my God, are you pregnant? No, I know. Everybody who looks at you, God is no respecter of persons. God says, you people should be able to look at you and know that you're pregnant with the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Spirit lives in you. He dwells in me. I'm carrying the word this morning. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Y'all understand you? Listen, listen, so, listen, so, so good. Number two, since y'all didn't get that one. Number two. Well, why did God choose Mary? Well, she was a carrier of the word, but number two, Mary found favor with God. Can I tell y'all what favor is? I mean, listen, Mary found favor, favor, favor with God. What is favor? Why did God choose Mary? She had favor. Let me tell y'all what favor is. Favor, this is so good. It is the tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord upon their life. <laughs> it's the tangible. Come on. It's the tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord upon their life. I want y'all to think about this. Mary had the tangible evidence that God was upon her life. Wow. And that's what I pray over me. That's what I pray over you this morning. That's what I pray over Facebook family. All those who are watching by website. I pray that listen to me. You know what the church needs? Tangible evidence that God is upon them. You, you know what I need in my life and you need in your life? Lord they know what we think. But when people look at me. I, we say this old 
We say it so often. Lord, let them, don't let them see me, but let them see you. That's tangible evidence. That's tangible evidence. God should be so tangible at Elkhorn Baptist Church. People from the north, east, south, and west should be able to look at this church and not see a pastor, not see a worship team, not see leadership, but see the presence of God. It should be a tangible evidence that God is real. Can somebody look at your life and say, can somebody look at your life and by the way that you're living, they can say, I know God, hallelujah. I know God is real. I know God is alive by the way that they live, hallelujah. By the way they live. By the way they live. That's my prayer for me. That when y'all bury me or the rapture sounds, you won't ever have to question, did Rafferty know Jesus? Let me go ahead and settle that for you. Yes. Let me tell you how you know that Rafferty loves Jesus. Because there is tangible evidence who I serve, who I walk with, who I talk with, who, who's in me. They always say, my granny told me, she said, Brian, whatever's in you will come out. We tell our children that all the time. Who you hang out with is what you'll be. Come. It's true. Because the closer you get to God, the more you act like him. Ooh, come on, Elkhorn. Yeah. The, the more, the closer you get to God. Why? Wow, I feel the Holy Ghost. The closer you get to God, the more you'll love like him. All this bitterness and all this anger, all this jealousy, all this stuff that goes on. Watch this. Watch this. The closer you get to him, the less you'll have of that. Somebody say, thank you, God. Somebody say, thank you, God. Yeah. Yeah. My prayer is that when somebody looks at this church, they won't see me. They won't see you. They'll see the tangible evidence that God is real. That God is real. That God is real. God is real. God is real. Tangible evidence that God and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is upon us. And I feel that in my spirit, and I can't get away from it. That we are all are walking in the fog. F-O-G. Favor of God. Favor of God. Favor of God. Walking in the fog. Walking in the fog. Walking in the fog. Go ahead. Look, look at your neighbor real quick and say, I see the favor of God on you today. Now, everybody else who's not talking, participate. Listen to me. You've got to be a part of this. You can't be a spectator. You've got to be a participator. If he's in you, you'll want what he, what he wants. He wants worship. He loves people. He don't run from problems. He runs to problems. Hallelujah. I want you to look at somebody else who, who's not even looking at you and say, you know what? Even though you're not looking at me, come on. Even though you're not looking at me, I see the favor of God on you today. I see the favor of God upon this youth group. I'm not just saying this for y'all. Don't, don't, don't clap. I see the favor of God upon this youth group. I see the favor of God upon this church. In the midst of a pandemic, souls are being saved and lives are being changed. The baptistry staying filled up. Our minds are not like the world. Somebody say, thank you, God. Yes, we got a battle. Yes, we're going through the middle of the valley of the shadow of death. But I know who follows me all the days of my life. And his name is surely goodness and mercy. I wish I had somebody give God praise on this. I see the favor of God. I see favor. I see favor. What makes you stand out? It's how, it's, how, it's how people see, watch. How do you get the favor of God? How did Mary, well, think about this. I know she had favor, but she was 16 years old. <laughs> how did she get favor? This is how I study. I ask God questions. I talk to him like I'm talking to you. God, how did Mary get favor? And you know what God told me? He went right to the Bible. Imagine that. Here's how Mary, and here's how I, myself, and here's how, how you will get favor of God. How many of y'all, first of all, let me ask this. And don't raise your hand because God, God in, in Hebrews eleven thirteen, God says, I know everything about you. Amen. Matthew chapter 10 says, I know every hair on your head. I know the stars in the sky. I know the sand on the sea. God, you can't fool God. How many of y'all truly want the favor of God upon your life? Thank you for being honest. If your hand's not up, watch. Thank you for being honest. Because there's people here today, they don't have their hand up. Watch this. It's okay. Watch this. Because you'll get what you want. You'll get. How do you get the favor of God on your life? Here's how you do it. 
Your response back to God determines your favor. Your response back to God determines your favor. I'm going to say it again. Your response back to God determines your favor. Y'all want me to prove it to you in the Bible? Let me, let me prove to you. Here's proof. Luke chapter 1 verse 38. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you, preacher. There's, <laughs> sorry. Luke chapter 1 verse 38. Mary said, God, the angel said, Mary, you're pregnant. How did that happen? I've not been with a man. I don't know no man. I'm engaged to Joseph. He's going to kill me. But I love her response, Mark. So good. How do you get favor? Here's, here it is. It's not really a deep theological word, but it is. Mary said back, she said, behold, watch. I am the servant of the Lord. Watch. Here's her response back. Let it be to me according to your word. My God, somebody give God praise on that one. Come on. Let, let, it, let it be unto me according to your word. See, some of you have a calling on your life and you're trying to tell God what you're going to do. It don't work like that. You want favor? You want doors to open up in your life? You want God's anointing? I'm talking double for your trouble. You want to be a blessed man going in and a blessed man coming out? You're, some of you are trying to figure out the word of God and God's sitting there going, you'll never figure me out. Just say yes. Y'all hear me? Just say yes. If anybody was due a complaint, <laughs> it was Mary. Y'all think about this. 16 years old, never been with a man. Y'all say y'all believe this stuff. Here's where the faith runs. Here's where people says, I don't understand it. But Lord, according to your word, this is what you said. God, I don't know. I've never walked on water. But Lord, according to your word, Peter did. Lord, I don't understand how I can lay hands upon a sick and they shall recover. But according to your word, I can do it. Y'all understand? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about him. And listen, here's power in this. When we get out of the way, I'm preaching to myself. And let him be God. And Lord, I don't understand it. But God, according to your word, it's me. Lord, whatever you want out of my life, God, do it to me. It's, I say yes. I say yes. God's just waiting for some of y'all to say yes. God's waiting for some of y'all to say, you know what? Lord, I, I give up. I, I, I'll never figure you out. But according to your word, this is what you're asking of me. And God, my answer is yes. 16 years old, pregnant by the Holy Ghost, never been with a man. Could y'all imagine a 16-year-old little girl, especially on leadership, that were to get pregnant, how the church looks at 16-year-old little girls? And then what if she were to show up at church, Mark? This is crazy. And he would say, um, who you been with? Nobody. <laughs> That's funny. I don't care who you are. Nobody. Yeah, nobody. I've not, I've not been with a man. Y'all listen to me. This happened. This is how crazy it is sometimes in Christianity. But we got to make our minds up. Whatever God says. God, whatever your word is. God, I say yes. God, if you want me to go to Nineveh, I'm going to go. I might try to go to Joppa first. But I'm going to go to Nineveh. Wherever God you want of me. God, I say yes. And so, listen, again, how you respond to God determines the amount of favor that you have on your life. You keep telling God no. You keep running from God. I promise me, you, there's, you're going to be a miserable, 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 miserable person. You will. And say, well, Brian, I don't look like a preacher. I don't either. I don't want to look like a preacher. I'll use that old 1980s Aquanet hairspray. Hair over to the left. I'm lucky to even have hair right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> how do you respond? How you respond? Everybody say, how you respond, how you respond? determines the favor. You keep saying no, the door's going to be shut. But if you say yes... God, I don't understand it, but according to your word, this is what you called me to do. God, I surrender. That's why God chose Mary. 
Let me go on. Mary was, she was pure. The last point, last point. Mary was pure. She was a teenager. Some scholars say she's anywhere from 14 to 16 years of age. <laughs> when she had Jesus. And so this tells me, if you're leaning and listening while I wrap this up. That age has nothing to do with God's favor. Come on, young people. Well, I got to wait till I'm 30 or 40 and understand God more. Good luck. She was 16 years of age. She was a carrier of God's word. She found favor in God's eyes. She was pure and holy. She was set aside. So it, does, it tells me, listen to me, it has nothing to do with God's favor, God's anointing, and you being a carrier of God's word. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and bust the Southern Baptist stuff. Mary was the first preacher. Uh-oh. Preacher, we got a problem. No, you do. She was the first one. First woman. Say, I got good news. Come on, somebody. I, I, I don't understand it. But according to God's word, this is what he said. I'm a carrier. I've got favor. I'm pure, I'm holy, I'm set aside. I've got some good news in me. Yeah. See, watch me. Some of y'all, when you talk to people, you're telling bad stuff. God says, I am good news. I'll deliver people, hallelujah. I'll set them free. I'll let the captives run free. I'll open jail cell doors, hallelujah. I'll get you out of the fire. If they put you in with the lines, I'll super glue their mouth. I'm God, all by myself, I need somebody. Whew. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I don't believe in that. <laughs> you don't believe in the Bible then. <laughs> she shared the good news. That's what the Bible says. The good news. Hey, watch this. Let's go ahead and go deep. Can I go deeper with y'all on Sunday? Sure to God, we're ready for this. Can I share y'all with something a deeper? So Mary has such good news. When she went to her relative Elizabeth, she... Knocked on the door. I, I'm animated, so it's all right. And Elizabeth comes to the door. And, and there, there was Mary. And she said, oh, Elizabeth, we need to talk. Um, I promise you I hadn't cheated on Joseph. We've already worked it out. <laughs> we went to a counselor. And Dr. Phil said, I just need to take. No, no, no. <laughs> I love preaching. She said, Elizabeth, I'm pregnant. Your Bible says Come on now. that John, the baby, y'all can say, look, I'm telling you, the baby that was in Elizabeth's womb leaked when she said, I am pregnant with some good news. I know people may look at me one way. I know I'm 16 years old, but I'm a carrier. I found favor. I'm pure. And I've got Jesus inside of me. The baby leaked. Everybody said the baby leaked. I'm going to go deep with y'all. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. I'm going to go deep with y'all this morning. This tells me two things. Should I feel the Holy Ghost? This tells me two things. The first thing, the first person to recognize Jesus was an unborn child. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what this tells me? That life begins in the womb. <laughs> that's why I don't I tell you I, that's, I've never seen a, quit questioning the Bible quit questioning the Bible just believe it just believe it Lord this is what you said here's what we need Lord this is what you said I don't understand it but God according to your word this is what you said and God I'm going to be a carrier. I'm going to give people good news. I'm going to quit condemning people. I'm going to quit talking all that nasty. I'm telling you, we got some good news. It is so good. Even an unborn child in a mother's womb leaped. Leaped. That's why, let me go ahead. I'm going to get in trouble while I'm in trouble. That's why taking an unborn child's life is sin. It's wrong. It's murder. You got to make your mind up. 
Y'all got, you got to make your minds up. They had a pastor on CNN. I don't normally watch CNN. This pastor, and I, I'm, I'm getting recorded, and I don't know what's going to happen. Because they're after the church right now. Every word that I speak, I'm telling you, there are people sitting in the government official offices right now, and they're listening. They're listening, trying to sue the churches. Well, they can, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, listen to me. This pastor was on CNN, and they said, is abortion wrong? This was a man of God of clock. No, he wasn't. Excuse me. This was a man. He was sitting there at CNN, and they said, is abortion wrong? And this pastor, so help me, you can go back on it. I'll give you his name if you text me. I'll give you the pastor's, well, the, the man's name. He had the gall to look up and sit and said, I'll never judge anybody. That sounds so good. But to me, that's between the mother and that child. The child can't speak. The child depends upon its guardians. And I'm here to declare today, you got a pastor in front of you that believes that life begins in the womb. It begins in the womb. It begins in the womb. And we don't have the power or the authority to tell anybody, to tell them what to do with that child. That child belongs to Jesus Christ. I get passionate about this. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. I said hallelujah. Yes. The first person to recognize Jesus was an unborn child. And that unborn child, let me go ahead and give you my second one. The second thing just tells me that the word of God should make you leap. <laughs> now, conservative people, religious people, when John, let me back this up. When John heard about Jesus, he leaped. So please, don't, don't tell me getting happy, getting excited about Jesus Christ, that I shouldn't leap, I shouldn't shout, and I shouldn't dance. I'm just telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, when you hear the name Jesus, it should make your spirit leap. Hallelujah. It should make you leap. It should say, oh my God, there's something about that name. He resurrected me. I'm not dying and going to hell. I've been born again. There's something different in my life. My belly's shaking this morning. I'm just telling y'all, first person to hear the message was an unborn child. And that unborn child in its mother's womb leaped. Y'all chew on that one. So when someone says, <laughs> I don't know when life begins, go to the Bible. I, I, I wrote this down in my, my notes. Hallelujah, I'm a leaper. I'm a leaper. I'm a leaper. Not a leper, a leaper. I'm a leaper. Man, listen, I love Jesus Christ. Everybody worships different. I understand that, but watch this. You know one thing we're all going to have in common when we get to heaven? Yes. We're all going to be worshipers. We're all going to be leapers. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Jesus Christ all by his name. Well, I ain't bowing down. You may not be in that line. <laughs> Y'all right? I love Elkhorn. You know why? Because I can just lay it out. I can lay it out. Listen to me. Mary was pure. Everybody say she was pure. And watch this. She honored and she obeyed the will of God. Listen to me. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. God chooses people who desire to do his will. I'm going to say that again. God chooses people who desire to do his will. Mary was determined to do God's will. Yeah. So here's what that tells me. Listen to me. She had the zeal for God's will. You, you, you want God's favor? You've got to have the zeal to do His will. You want God's anointing? You want to be a carrier of the Word? You want to remain pure and holy and righteous? You've got to have the zeal for God's will. Mary, let me go on. I'm on. JT and Mary, y'all come on up here. I've got to wrap this up. Everybody good? I'm going to wrap this up. 
I'm going to land to 747 right now. Mary was a light. Everybody say she was a light. She was a light to her community. She was a light to her community. And here's what I've noticed about Christians. I worked hard on this one. So y'all please, even if you don't like what I'm getting ready to say, please act like you do. What I've noticed about Christians, and I want them to put this up here because I, this is good. Christians are either lampshades or light bulbs. Christians are either lampshades <laughs> or light bulbs. Lampshades or light bulbs. Let me, let me, let me, it's good. Lampshades dim the light. <laughs> yeah, lampshades, they dim the light. Watch this, lampshades, now they're part of the lamp. This is so good, I could go, I could go a thousand different directions right here. The lampshade is a part of the lamp. As a Christian, you can be part of the body, but you can be a dimmer switch. My God, my God, help me preach Holy Ghost. A lampshade hides the light. It covers the light. Dims the light. But a light bulb, hallelujah. A light bulb, hallelujah. It shines, it's pure, it's clean, it glows. It stands out. And when darkness is in the room and you flip on the light switch, it's got to flee in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you a lampshade or are you a light bulb? I'm going to ask you right now today. I need, I need light bulbs. God said in Matthew chapter 5, you are the light. You're the light. Elkhorn, hallelujah. I know we got 131 churches in, in South Central. I understand all this stuff. I know we're going through the COVID right now. I know we got a worldwide pandemic right now. I know that. But I got some light for you today. God is still on the throne. He's God, He's sovereign, He's good, He's still the light of the world. He loves us so much. And I'm just telling you all today, it's time to be the light. It's time to be the light. Some of you are trying to be dimmer switches. Well, I don't know why they act like that. Because they're light. Because they've got the Holy Ghost in them. They've got favor on their life. And I'm not back. I'm a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, tongue-talking pastor. I'm not backing off that no more. I don't believe in it. I don't care. I believe there's order. I believe there's order in God's house. And I've made tons of mistakes. Here's what I'll tell you. Every word in your Bible, from in the beginning to Amen. It's not factual. It's truth. I don't understand it all. Watch me. I'm helping y'all. I don't understand it all. But when I'm in a battle, I always go, God, according, let's tell me, you help y'all, according to your word, this is what you said. And God, I stand on it. God, it's time to take the lampshade off. God, it is time to turn the light bulb on. God, it is time to be plugged into the right source. And God, if I'm plugged into the right source, and God, when you turn me on, I'll shine, I'll shine, I'll shine for you. I wrote this down. Who I feel like. <laughs> I know we don't understand it all. You know some of my biggest meetings that I have? Is that the Word of God is in the Bible. And people will make an appointment with me. They'll walk into my office. And they'll say, I got this going on. And I'll say, but according to God's Word. Brian, my marriage is falling apart. But according to God's Word. Brian, we are in the middle of a pandemic. And we're losing people. This, that, But according to God's Word. Listen to me. This is not our home. I love being y'all's pastor, but watch this. One day, y'all, we all gonna sit under the ultimate pastor. 
God, I can't wait. Oh, I'm kind of I'm homesick today. It's real. I don't, Tracy, I don't question the Bible no more. I don't question it no more. It will it set me free. God, according to your word, this is what you said. This is what I'm standing on, God. I know I got a bunch of lampshades around me, God, doubting and talking and all this other stuff. But God, I'm going to walk on water today. God, I'm taking off the lampshade today. I'm plugged into you. And God, turn me on. Y'all ready? Here it is. I know, I wrote this down in my notes. I know we're not sinless. You realize that? I know we're not sinless, but watch this. But when Jesus Christ comes in, I sin less. I sin less. It bothers me. It bothers me if I hurt you. It bothers me. Have y'all ever walked into a room and just felt, oh God, it's <laughs> something, something's not right in this room. Watch. I know we're not sinless. But when Jesus comes in, Jenna, I sin less. I'm going to say it one more time. Do y'all get this? I know we're not sinless. Everybody, 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 everybody sins. If you say that, the Bible says you lie. And the truth is not in you. I know we're not sinless. Hallelujah. But when Jesus Christ comes in, we sin less. We sin less. We sin less. We sin less. Amen. How many of you are glad you came to church today? I'm so glad you're here. Come on. One last time. Let's put our hands together. Let's act pregnant today. Amen. Let, let's say, God, there's something in me. <laughs> God, there's something in me today. God, I feel it. God, you're moving in my life. God, I know I'm not sinless. But God, you're in me and I sin less. Come on, somebody. Let's praise God today. Amen. Come on, raise your voice in this house. Give God a crazy praise in here today. Oh, God, we welcome you today. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's real. So remember, the plane's coming down. Why did God choose Mary? Because she was a carrier of the word. She was a carrier of the word. Number two, she found God's favor. Yep. Tangible, watch, tangible evidence that God was on her life. 16, see, my daughter is 16 years old. Desi, I thought about you. I thought about you. I thought about you. She's 16, the same age as Mary. And I can honestly God say, my baby girl, she's a carrier of the word. She's a carrier of the word. She's taking notes up here. Now listen. She's found God's favor. <laughs> All the way from China. Found God's faith. But she's pure. She's pure. You are a candidate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For God to choose you. <laughs> are y'all a candidate? Thank you, Holy Ghost. For God to choose you. Come on. Are you a carrier of God's word? Are you do you, are you got God's favor upon your life? Are you pure? Are you can God look on earth and say, I can choose that girl? I can choose that one. I believe he can. I know he can. Because I feel it. So in Jesus' name, I'm going to open this altar. Listen to me. You come if God's dealing. Stay six feet apart. It's okay. Well, Brian, where's your faith? Not in COVID. <laughs> Not in COVID. So listen, this altar's open. Or if you want to make your seat an altar, that's good too. Y'all can sit down, you can pray, seek the Lord. And I double dog dare you say, God, make me a carrier. Lord, make me a carrier. God, show me your faith. Tangible evidence that God's real in my life.
God is real in my life. Not because I can shout, not because I speak in tongues, not because I'm a pastor. I want tangible evidence when I leave here today and I go somewhere. And then say, oh, Rafferty over there, he crazy, but he loves God. Tangible evidence that God's upon your life. And lastly, pure. You've got to be pure to hold the presence of God. You can't be dirty. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, as we go into this altar time, I pray to God that, Lord, the lampshades would come off. Hallelujah. That, God, the Lord Jesus Christ right now, the light bulbs will shine. Elkhorn, we need light bulbs. We need light bulbs. We need you to shine. It's time to shine. I know pandemic's here, but shine in the midst of a dark time. So, Father God, may we take off the lampshades and may the light bulbs shine today. Lord, I pray this prayer believing that, Lord, transition's taking place right now. That God, revival is birthing in this church right now. That God, the best is yet to come. God, we're not going to step back in the back seat, dear God, and take a second ride. Lord, here today, God, we need you right now. So, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name, shine in this place. Take the lampshade off and may the light bulbs come on in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen. This altar is open. I love y'all. Y'all did great today. But this altar is open. Come and shine for Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name.